Okay. Okay, guys. Welcome, everybody. Uh, first, I need to check who is here. So I'm sorry if I mess up your names. I hope I won't. Uh, Davorin Pok. Natalia Panic. Elvira Rosic. Kasper Kos. Matias Mlakar. Klavdia Oblak. Slavci Lubic. Mm -hmm. Robert Matevžić. Darko Lesiak, okay. Nina Vodep, uh, Nina Dolent, Spela Jura, Jura, mm. Eva, Eva Gogala, mm -hmm. Simona Kuzma, Barbara Topolovet, Janja Meglic, okay. Sinisha Drobniak. Drobniak? Oh, look at that, I'm gonna. Blash Meglic. Mm -hmm. Špela Javornik. Franci Kovac. Okay, and there is somebody, some people extra. You have to. Yes, please. Yes, please. Bera, Bera. <laughs> okay, I have to be here because they told me I should stand here. Okay, so hello everybody, once again, it's okay. First of all, I want to ask you, all of you working only with the women's team? Girls, okay. Second, hands up, who is working with the under 15? Uh, properly. So it's about half-half. Okay, so we're gonna go for both categories. Still probably a little bit more for the younger ones. Uh, I'm telling you ahead. Although my team is specialization, I'm going to spend a lot of time on transition, actually, because that's the most important, in my opinion, when it comes to the youth basketball. So even if you're going to speak about the specialization, it's going to be within the transition, and mostly openings of the transition. Um, thank you. I don't need this. First of all, what I'm going to start talking about is uh, preparation of the youth, because it's totally something else than when you're working with the adults because kids are not adults and you can't practice the same way with them as you can with uh, old, older or already senior players. So even if you're looking for exercises, make sure that you're looking for the kids' exercises, not the senior players' exercises. What is most important, uh, I need to know when are you starting with the preparation here? So when are you starting actually with the basketball? Is it age six, seven, eight or sooner? It's about seven, eight or? Okay, you have countries where they stay, start even sooner because kids today, they are not so good anymore with the coordination or even the simple motoric abilities like running or jumping because they spend a lot of time on the computers or phones. So it's very important that you take care of that in the preparation and you spend extra time on actually teaching them how to run, teaching them how to jump. And what is more important, not jump, but actually land because that's the problem. Not even the jumping, but when you land because the the energy which is produced, the power on the muscles and especially on the joints can be 10 times more than actually the body weight. So that's when the injuries might occur if it's not done properly. So you have to be aware of that and you have to really spend extra time on the athletic preparation, let's call it that way, with the kids. Anyways, this is going to help them when they're going to grow older because if you start to specialize too soon, they're going to probably get very good with the ball handling but later on, they're not going to improve as much as they could. If they're not going to be very good, for example, runners, or able to change direction, they're going to be perfect ball handler, but if they don't know how to change direction or speed up, later on, it's not going to help them. So when you're speaking about the preparation with the kids, you have to take into consideration the biological, the motoric, and uh, 
pedagogic or psychological rules which you should use with the kids because it's much different than adults. You should not expect them to perform on top level and you should always, whatever you do, the tactical technical preparation, you should adjust to their understanding because as the kids they have totally different understanding on what's going on and what they see on the court. So from the very beginning you work also on the vision they have on the court. How they see the court, how they see the space, how much they can count on moving moving players in direction where they're approximately going to be. It's going to help them with the passing ability, so they're going to be able to pass better, for example, and they're going to be able to cut better. Other thing what is important to work with is to start playing with the kids with different balls. As you look behind, I brought just to show that there are different balls, so tennis balls, the soft balls. That's a half kilo medicine ball, which you can use in the category of under 15 for passing to improve, because you're going to work basically on their strength and they're gonna learn how to pass actually faster. The pass, after all, is gonna be like stronger when they're gonna come back into the normal basketball. Um, what is important? So you're starting in the age six, seven. You have to think of the fact that the first one to three years depend of the individuality, how good they are. It's just the basic, basic preparation, what they're gonna learn. So first they're learning how to catch the ball probably, a little bit how to dribble, because that's problem in the beginning. So you have to count on the fact it might take two to three years and you should not do anything specialized. So everybody does the same thing on the court. Then as they get older, so about nine to 12 years old, that's the second period, that's those two periods we're gonna talk about and those take about two to four years again, depend. You can have a player in the age of 15 who is already on really good level. You can have a player who is probably like 10, 11 years old in their mind with the body and everything and that's what I wanna talk about here now. So in the first, the very first, so under 13 age, you should really focus on the technical and coordination part. The preparation should be connected. So even if you're working on the technical parts, for, for example, passing, you're gonna use different balls. You're gonna use basketball, you're gonna use softer ball, different sizes. It's gonna, the, their kinesthetic ability is gonna improve much better. And later on, they're gonna be better with feeling the ball if you, heard that, like to feel the ball, to, to feel the space, where exactly I need to pass, for example. Uh, whatever you do, again, you have to simplify all the exercises for their understanding. So the technical part should be connected to the coordinative part and also to the tactical part. So whatever I'm doing, I'm explaining why we're doing it. For example, two-handed pass, we're all starting with two-handed passes. But actually, how much do you use them in the game? maybe transition, two-handed pass ahead. Everything else should be one-handed, right? Left, right. Should be, but it's not. And that's why we should be there to actually teach them that yes, we start, because it's much easier for the kids to start receiving with two hands, so do the bilateral movement, but then everything should be one. And especially the weak side. So if you have most of the kids are right-handed, they're gonna do everything with the right hand anyways. So when you, for example, teaching passing, you're going to tell them, we're going to do passes 10 times with the right, but 15 with the left. So you're going to equalize a little bit the hands. So they're going to get the extra repetition because you tell them to do it. Now, when we, call, when we speak about the passes, for example, I'm just going to use examples because we don't have so much time. So you start two-handed passes, but do not spend so much time on them and start with the one-handed ones. They learn how to catch the ball and a little bit the basics. You go one-handed, it can be from the hip, it can be from the shoulder, it can be baseball pass and they should work on the technique of it and you should focus on the key points from the very beginning. And it should be one or two things only what you tell them to focus on. So for example, it can be extend the elbow on the pass so it's not whichever way. So for example, with one-handed pass, it can be always extend the elbow and then the hand is pointing to the person you're passing to. That can be example. Now, of course, you can tell them, use the wrist, put the fingers down. But kids respond better to the external focus or external instruction. So if you tell them wrist down, fingers down, that's internal because it's their body. But they don't feel the body so well yet. So you actually gonna do better job telling them focus on spin, the ball has to have a spin, even when they're shooting. The ball has to spin and you show them, they just gonna reflexively, they're gonna see you doing it and hopefully you have the players who can pick up on that so you don't tell them do this, but you tell them the ball has to spin. Or the ball has to bounce. You don't tell them 
bounce the ball and you put their space or something. The, the external instructions or the focus on the external stuff is better working for the kids when they're learning something. If you have any questions or I speak too fast, just please say it, okay? Um, so when we have very young kids, uh, in the beginning, I said you should focus on the, on the general stuff. So you teach them how to run, you teach them how to jump. You have to think of the fact, actually, that this general approach works about for one, two years, maybe. And then you have to go specific anyway. So you have to, for example, in running technique, you will have to teach them how to actively step in when you're doing athletic exercises. Or you can start using basketball stuff, the first step, how they should step, how they should accelerate. But they should spend a lot of time on acceleration. Did you hear about the sensitive periods for kids? Sensitive periods for improvement. Yes? Can you say something to it? Or? Yes, it depends. So the kids, because the body is developing and the, the central nervous system and the peripheral is developing, they have periods where they learn better. Now the thing is, you can learn through the whole life. You have a players which learn in the age of 28 new moves. So it's not that it's stopped, but basically the development, the biggest development you can get in the age until 12 years old. Before the kids start to grow extensively, with the girls it's about the age 10 to 14, approximately, guys, uh, yeah, 10, 13, guys about 12, 14. Because then they start to grow, the body changes, the length of the, for example, limbs changes, and they're actually going to lose some of the coordination. So they probably were better before they started to grow. And you have to keep, keep that in mind and stay positive with them because they're going to feel themselves that I can't do that anymore and I'm so bad. I, it's, so you have to be positive with them because they might drop off basketball because of that. Because they're going to feel like I'm not getting any better. I'm not getting, uh, okay? So stay positive, focus on the little thing and try to keep them at least in this growing time, try to keep them at the same level when it comes to the coordination. So you keep working on the running technique, for example, which is important for the kids, and everything what they do in basketball as well. Uh, how many practices you do in the age under, thir under 13? How many practices per week you get? Four. Three to four. Two. two. So two to four, three to four. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Now the thing is, as they get older, it's hour and a half practice, right? That's okay. Now if you want to improve them, you actually do not go into intensity with the kids so much, but you go for the extension of the practice. So from three to four, you go five to eight, under 15 already. Now why? One of the thing is because you should spend enormous time on the athleticism. Because the kids nowadays, they don't know how to move. They don't know the, the basic biomechanical movement, the, the motoric, what was for us, older, I don't know, I, I can say, I guess, the 80s kids and 90s still, we were able to move outside, we were running a lot. The kids today, they don't do it anymore and they really don't know the basics. I don't know what is your experience, that's my experience. So, when you try to improve them, you first put more amount of practice, practice times and games. And just later on, you go into intensity. Now, why? It's also connected going back to the growth. So before the growth happens, the body is very immature. So even if you will try to work, for example, at endurance, it's not going to bring such an effect because the body is not ready to take it. So when you coach, you should keep in mind um, I'm going to speak about now about 5S. So the first is skill. The age under 15 and younger, we can call hungry years. Because the kids are able to learn whatever you're going to do with them, they are able to learn and pick up it quickly, and they're going to improve a lot, just because they're picking up stuff. And it's easier. When they get older, it's harder to move them to better level, to higher level, because they need to really master whatever they're going to do. The second very important thing is speed. Why speed? Because before the growth, actually, there is a period, sensitive period for the body. Can you, if you work on acceleration and change of direction, in the age before 12, 
you're going to see later on how much better they're going to be compared to the peers who did not work on those abilities because the body is ready to learn. Okay? When they get older, for example, you're going to see the difference if you're going to spend time for this athletic preparation more or workout strength and a little bit of endurance. And when it comes to the strength, so it's from the age about 14 for the girls, 15 for the guys, you should start working. They, they slowly, the biggest growth is done, usually for them. And you should start to preparing the muscle of what's coming, because as they're growing, actually, the dense, bone density is different. So they're very prone to injury. In this, in this age of growing, they are very prone to injury. First, the bones are growing. The density is not so strong, so they can break more easier than normal. Second, the ligaments and the muscles need more time to adapt to this growth. So you see a lot of problems kids get in this age already with the lumbar, this, this down part of the back, and especially where, where the apophysis is where the ligament is sticking to the bone. The very typical is probably you know here on the knee for guys. It's very typical. Also girls have it. It hurts. When they're growing, you practice with them and you say, coach, my, my knees are hurting. So you should be careful with this, and you should take care of it. If it hurts, a little, you, you need to know the player, of course, okay? If it's somebody who's like, oh, it's different, but somebody might be really like, okay, it's hurting, coach, like really. You should step back a little bit, not go so hard on them, wait a year or something, go easier, because they might get injured, just because the body is developing and they are not ready to take what you're doing with them. So you step back, you wait, and then you work with them again, and they're going to be fine, okay? Any questions to this? Very quiet group, once again. So we have speed, and you should work on acceleration speed once again, and change of direction, which is important for basketball. That is connected also to coordination, and it's connected to strength, because actually you are able to change direction better if you're strong here. So that's what I'm going to talk about now a little bit is because if I want to change direction and my shoulders are still here because my stomach is so loose, I can't run so quick if this is strong and holds it together. So you should spend some time on the core workout, on the basic stability with the kids. And actually, before we even practice with them, usually the kids are fine. Although nowadays, it's, we can discuss that. But because we start to work with them, we do a lot of moves in basketball like this, right? So we actually teaching them or we be leading them to balance the, the mass of this balance because this part is going to get stronger than this one and that might cause troubles. So what you need to focus on in practice is that you're working out with calves, hamstring, and abs. Why? It also makes them better runner. They're going to be faster and they're going to jump better because those muscles are very important in sprinting and jumping. Now with the kids, you can start from the very beginning and you will see it with the body exercises. So when you're speaking about the strength, we're going to speak just about the body exercises. They can use their own body and actually be lacking that a lot in basketball. And especially when they're starting to grow, it's getting much worse with them because they are sometimes not able to do push-ups. Do you have players who can do push-ups? One push-up? Five proper push-ups or they're going to go like this? Coach 20, okay? Or they're going to be like this. So you have to really work on them and do it properly so they, they get the muscles properly developed the way they need because all this, this means something is already not right with the bodies, okay? If you take a squat, which is very simple exercise, with the kids, if you watch very little kids, three years old, the common position for them is this, right? They do it just like they're playing like that in the sand and stuff. Ask all the players to do this. They will be sitting here, the heels up because Achilles is too tight, whichever way turn. So it's good when you start from the very beginning with the kids working on those whole body exercises because they are not yet damaged. Let's put it that way, okay? And you're actually going to prevent them from injury. Now, this is not really subject for what I'm going to talk about. It's just to touch it a little bit because it's important in, in those years when they're growing. It's very important that you take care of their bodies. So they're going to be able in the age of 16, 17, 20 plus, able to play maybe till they are 35. Okay? That's why. And it's actually this period when you need to take care of that. <clears throat> Stamina or endurance. You should not work with the kids before age of 15 on this. 
because they are not yet ready. The, the, muscle, the muscles, muscular system, and the cardiovascular, nothing is ready for that. So even if you work with them, go for speed, go for short, intense exercises, 10 seconds maybe, 20 seconds rest. If they get better, with older, under 15, 15 seconds workout, 15 seconds rest, or more. But not more than 30 seconds, because they can take it. They're still going to improve, and they will improve the endurance, but you don't need to make them run long. You don't need to make them do exercises for 20 minutes, okay? So rather, that's what they need for the basketball. You go short, intense, break. Short, intense, break. And it's going to help them still. The last part, which is more common for guys, not for girls, is because of this growth, flexibility. That's the fifth S. So we have skill, speed, stamina or endurance, strength, and supplements. Or, in the other words, flexibility. You're going to have kids. You tell them, touch the toes, and this is it. I don't know how it's, what's your experience with the, with the kids, with the girls, okay? I have guys, they come, now I'm working with the guys, this is it for them. Age of 14, done, okay? Now, why is it important to work on the flexibility? Injury. If you do tight, more likely you're gonna get injured. They don't understand that, and you need to push them to do the stretching to work on the flexibility. Because as they're growing, I said it before, the muscles need more time in the ligaments than the bones. So spend time on that. When we speak about the, the growing, okay, we can speak basically about two changes that are happening in this time for the kids. The, the way I would use it is we can talk about a hardware change, so it means they're getting taller, they're getting bigger, okay? Also the CNS, the central nervous system peripheral is improving, and then the software, so the way they understand what's going on. In this period, there are huge changes in the understanding of the world, of what's, what you're telling them, how much they can focus. So those are the two main things which are gonna help them also to improve a lot. But you should still keep in mind there are kids, do not make them work for too long, focus short time, few things only. Um, now the age 7 to 12, it's for most of the kids, it's the time when they can improve the most when it comes to coordination, speed, change of direction, so and so. That's why it's so important to start working with them. Actually games, not basketball, but any games is very good for them to do. Even chasing game, soccer, whatever. Because they're going to work for the endurance, themselves, they, it's going to be some the regulation, themselves regulation, so you don't need to push them. They're going to go as hard as they can because they want to play, usually. And then when they can't anymore, they stop. So you're going to work on whatever you want to improve with them without even pushing them anywhere. And did you ever heard, because after this age, it's coming, this is the most sensitive period for development of the kids. But then did you heard about biological age compared to chronological age? So there are, you can have, let's, let's take two girls, age of 14. The one's gonna look like she's 16, 17. The other one's gonna look like 12, 11, 12. Now which one you probably gonna think is gonna be better basketball player in the future? The same age, both of them, 14 years old. The one is already looking like 16 years old, built, very strong, she can go to the basket. The other one is like 12. Which one is going to be probably a better player later on? The younger, the, the one who looks younger. So kids in this time can look, the, the difference might be three years between them. They are the same chronolo chronolo chronological age, sorry, 14, but it can be three years difference so you can have 14 years old who is like 17, and you can have 14 years old who is like 11. Now if you're working with them in practice, strength, even the skills, you should think about it and put them in the groups together like that. So it's not going to be that all of us, we're going to do 20 push-ups. It's going to be you, you go four, you, you go six, you, you go 15. But you're going to differ depending on their ability and their maturation, okay? Just keep in mind the younger, the, the late matures are probably going to be better players 
So spend time on them, although they might be not so good in this age. And that goes especially for the tall players, because you know they really have troubles to run, catch the ball, that's extremely hard for them. Spend extra time on them, because it's going to pay off later. Um, now when you're teaching, so the technical development in this age should be closely linked to the, to the coordinations, okay? Still keep in mind the key points, as I told you, and not too many. Use a lot of games for them to actually improve, because that way you don't need to push them, especially in the age under 13. They're just going to do it because they like it. I'm going to show you in the end exercise for that. Uh, when you work, now the specific preparation compared to the general preparation. You should go 20 basketball stuff, 80 all the other stuff. Now think of your practice, how you actually really work, 20 to 80. Later on it can be 50 to 50. I think we're all spending too much time on the specific basketball stuff, which is not so important, actually. Now when it comes to the technical, tactical preparation, spend more time on the individual development. So learn them one-on-one, -on -one, how to get open, how to dribble, and then when it comes to the combination, give and go. I pass, I cut. I get open. Do not use any screens. I asked your colleagues before, so you can use, you can use on ball screens, but you can use off ball screens. I would still not start with the off ball screens before they don't know how to get open themselves. I would push them to play one on one, do it yourself, and then we add the help there for you how to get open. Um, yeah. How, how many of you actually spending time uh, for stabilization with the kids? Hands up properly. So think about this when you're going to start now, because it's going to make them this. This is, this is the tool you use on the court, right? So if this gets better, the performance is going to be better. So you should spend time on this, and then you will see that they're going to bring that into everything what you do. Uh, I'm going to just put it up together now, and then we're going to start working. So in the age, in the age under 13, twice a week, start working on the strength a little bit. But when we mean strength, it means whole body exercises, okay? Bilateral, so it always like, not on one leg, everything on two legs or push-ups with two arms, everything where both of the limbs are involved. Use the time on the stabilization. The stabilization, which is static, so standing on one leg, this might be already hard for them. The ones who were with me in the clinic, they saw it even with the other ones, okay? Then slowly you start using maybe a little move and then dynamic stabilization, so out of spring stop, stop properly, okay? Stop on one leg from jumping and everything, but you need to start working. So in the age of 12, first, static, and then if they're getting better, because they actually improve radically in it, you can add slowly. Metabolic, so endurance and stuff like that. Let them do it themselves. Let them play a lot of games. When they're gonna, if they're going to go hard, they're going to go hard. If they can't anymore, they won't. Let them do that. Uh, as I said, the balance exercises, when you're starting with them, everything should be on the, on the ground. So now no balance, balance beans and stuff like that. Let them first get it on the stable, on the stable ground. Now when they get older, and all this, do it at least twice a week. 20 minutes of practice spent on this, really. And you're going to see later on why. But you have to be patient, two, three years. Now when they get older, you can go two to four times, so at least three times, put it that way. And you go, you start to use more unilateral, so one-handed exercises, for example. So, for example, push-up, from normal push-up for a kid, because this might be already a problem, you can go on one ball, okay? So it's a little bit more emphasis on the one arm. 
Uh, you can start to use uh, some weights, but you have to think it should be 5 to 10% of the body. So 50 kilo kit, that's about 5 kilos max, not more, okay? And focus more on the technique. As I said, use the whole body, so proper squat, lunge, stuff like that, before you do whatever else. But it's good to start with them, because in the age of 15, they actually start, they should start working out, also in the weight. To teach them proper technique. No weights, just a stick, but that's not my subject now. Now, when it comes to the narrow muscular, because the body is changing so much, it's just to not, you, whatever you do, all those, strength training, narrow muscular training, it's just to pretend them from injury, because that's, that's the most dangerous in this time. So you start to work on one leg, but you can start adding balance beans and stuff for them to work on that. It can start to be more in the move. Okay. That's about it to this. Just keep in mind, kids need to practice differently. Spend a lot of time on the athleticism. Right technique, a lot of coordination. In the age of 12, you should know that the kids are already, or like we already mastered 90% of the coordination ability we have, or like whatever we can do. 90% of it already. So you should really spend a lot of time in practice on it. Questions? So now the, the more interesting part, basketball. I'm going to speak, I told you in the beginning, I'm going to speak about specialization, but we're just going to go, I pick specialization in transition, and first what you have to start is, you start to just split parameter players inside players. So now when we talk about the biological age and the growth, page V, maybe, if you're going to look up online. So you will know approximately in the age, in this age, this critical age, up to 14 with guys, 13 with girls, you can, you can approximately tell how high, what's going to be their height when they're going to be adults. It goes from the, it, it depends on the parent's height, of course. It depends how much they grow in this time. So you should check them three times maybe within the season so you see how, they, how much they're growing. And you will be able to tell, okay, this player is going to be probably 190, 2 meters, 160. And you will know approximately which position you try to shift them to. So you're more inside, you're more outside, okay? Not really position like point guard and, you know, power forward. Just inside, outside. That's already good. When it comes to transition, first you have to start teaching them to not run everybody in the middle. Like, they like, right? They grab the ball, everybody in the middle, basket to basket, as close to the ball as possible. So first what you try to get with the kids, First, you try to teach them spread out, get wide. And how you do it, you use, as you see, I put here a lot of cones. So first, what they need to learn, first, what they, this is for you, I want to ask then. If you know, or I'm going to ask now, then I'm going to, sorry. Do you know this one? It's called LTAD. It's Canadian, Canadian Federation. They made manual for the coaches. It's very nicely put. They're explaining a lot of things in it in a very nice way, what you should do in practice. You can download it online. I'm going to leave it here. You can look at it after. And you have, it's not exercises, but it's just the, the understanding of what you should do in which time with the kids, what you should work on. Okay. So back to the lanes. Can you see from there as well? So with the kids, what you first want to teach them is that they need to start understanding they should not run all in the middle like this, right? So spread them out. So what you do, if you look at the red cones, you just use the cones so they will start to understand some spacing. So you put the cones along the court, like those little ones, so they will understand I get a ball, or sorry, I don't get a ball, and I run wide at the mid-court. I start to look where the ball is, but I'm running this way. I don't know how you're finishing, if you're teaching them to go in and step out, or you're teaching them to go to the corner. That's up to you, OK? What I prefer to do, I'm, I'm teaching the kids in the beginning to come down to the block. Why? Because if, the, if you tell them to run, they will run. They will run. And they're attacking the baseline as we're playing rugby, OK? 
or American football, not a basket. So if I tell them to go wide, I tell them to go to the sideline from the wing position, I'm going to go more specifically. But just to understand this lane, because this is the first lane. So to run here, now when they start to understand they're running, they need to come down here to the block, and then you tell them either step out, step out, whatever else you need. If they start to understand the running white, you can actually do it within one practice, you tell them, okay, but here at the half court, you want to get the ball already, right? Because it might be the first one. So if I'm coming, I already look, and I'm looking where the ball is, and I start to show target, the hand. So they start to understand that it's not just running, but I turn. Now what the kid's going to do, they're going to start to do this. So you tell them, and you actually can practice that. So you teach them how to run, turn the upper body, and still running. And that this is, again, it is basketball, but it's not really basketball. So for warm-up, you can do with them just running, turn, show the hand. Running, turn, show the hand. Run, show the hands, OK? So you put the stuff within the running into whatever you want to do, the technical part. So OK, the one lane with the kids. With the kids, to start, they need to start understand. If you will start speaking about five lanes, probably they're going to look at you like. So you start very simple. So we tell them, you make the lanes for the wings to run, so they will understand. And the third lane in the middle. Now, this is for the wings. This is for the post player and the guard. But you should not run so close to each other that you hold hands, right? So they're going to get a little bit of spacing, not running into each other, but so they understand this one. Now, when they get better, already understand this, that's when you add the five lane principle. So you get, can you come closer? Can you come closer, please, from the sides? So you're going to see? Just, just make a half circle. Make a half circle, please. Then we're going to do exercises. This is still just blah, blah, blah. So what you do then, like you see those cones here, from three lanes principle, you teach them five lanes in the age of 15. For example, under 13, you put a goal for yourself. I'm going to teach them get white, middle is for the guard, and the post players. When they get older, you go. You see the cones, right? As they are here. So you go this lane is the lane for the wings. Now this lane. It's for the post players. And this is for the guards. OK? So from the three, you go to five, so they understand better the spacing. So even if the guard gets the ball on the side, as you teach, they should bring the ball only here and stay in this lane, which is for them, to not run into each other. Now again, they get this. You add to them post players, for example. You're still running in the middle lane, right? So first you tell them you are the rim runner. The one trailer is the rim runner who doesn't get a ball. So first they're going to run like this. You tell them, run rim to rim. So we get a rebound on this side, and they're going to run. And they're going to go straight in the middle. They're going to turn, and they're still going to go. The ball is probably there, but they're going to be in the middle. Now for improving the angle, and because they get better with the spacing, three lanes, five lanes, now we tell them, OK, but now I want you to run away from the ball. Still in your lane, but away from the ball. It gives you mirror, but they start to understand spacing better. And it's going to be better passing angle for them to get it. But you have to put it slowly in practice, step by step. So once they master something, we can go further. But start really with the simple things. So what is important? First start. Spread out. Turn at the half court, see the ball, show the target. Able to finish. OK? Uh, I don't know you're teaching the guys to come to the sideline or me the ball for the outlet. With the kids, what we can start with, on this side I'm going to show it. So with the kids, when they're coming for the outlet, what I prefer to do, I first tell them sideline, back out, as for the ball. Because this way you see the whole court, because they like to do this, and then they don't see. So really push them first, sideline, turn, see the court. 
It also helps them to understand that if I don't get a ball, I can just run, and I'm already in the lane, right? So it's not that they just start to run in the middle. So they always know I have to go to the side. I'll show you exercises, not really for two, but we, I'm going to start from three on, OK? Then you can teach them that they go to the sideline. They learn this and dribble. So you teach them they are here, but actually before the pass coming, I'm already going to meet the ball. And I'm meeting the ball, and I can go. But again, step by step, start first, second. OK, I will need three guys, please. I will need three guys, three people who want to show. Three people, please, get up. While you're going to get ready and decide who wants to come, OK? Three with one ball. Can you go on the sideline? Now, as you see those cones here, that's for the five lane principle when you teach the kids. So I said, you can teach in the beginning, you can teach them block, step out to the corner, for example. Why? Because if the ball is coming, they can still come up to the ball, right? And if there is a defender and they learn this move, I don't get a ball, I step out, I'm coming to the ball. If you put the defender there, and the defender is going to come with them, they can go back door. Right? Simple spacing, not really doing so much, but they're going to start understand, ah, this is how I get open. OK? Not just jogging, but it has to be block, corner, up, maybe back door. And the third one. Now, when you're doing exercises in two, I bet you do a lot of those exercises. Now I'm going to start showing with you guys. I'm going to skip them. Oh, you want to warm up a little bit? Because it's going to be running. You want to warm up a little bit? Because it's going to be running. Just get a little bit ready, please. Yeah, tell your colleague. OK, as you see here, I put some spacing points for the kids. You can teach. So first, you teach them the lanes come to the block corner. Then you can use, for the perimeter players, you can use the area so you have the corner. But this might be dangerous for trap. So you teach them the high corner. So they actually come, it's like in the middle, where the three-point line is doing this edge. So they will know. They can still step out, they can still go back door, and they are not too close to each other. Now for the post players, what you teach them first is to run to the basket and try to get the ball first of all here. With the kids, this is possible. So straight to the basket. I still pin my player behind me. I try to get a ball. Now, I don't get it. I don't know what you want to teach. There are different ways. I'm going to the ball side. Post up. Pass. Or you want them to go weak side, maybe, already. Or you want them to go to corner to play five out. That's up to you. But teach them to go post player, basket to basket. Now, first two. Can I have the ball? I bet when you're teaching kids in two, you go like, we're going to show it, OK? You have two players probably. This is very common exercise, which I know, the red, the red ones. So I'm the inbounder. I get the ball. I give you the ball. You should take it to the middle. And I'm running here. OK, for spacing, but do you want your post here? Do you want your post there, or you want your wing there? So now you have to rethink. Some exercises we're taking just because people did it before us. But do I really want to do it? Or I want the runner to go to the middle. OK? So you have to rethink. For the spacing, maybe. OK. But then it will be smarter. I do the outlet on the side, and I'm taking the middle lane. And I'm trying to get a ball here, OK? Just rethink a little bit what you're doing in practice, and if it's really what you want to get. OK, in three. First, without the ball, how you teach the spacing. This we can put away. First, how you can start with the kids. Static. Without the ball. You add the ball, you add the move, then you can add defenders, OK? So first, I just would like you to, let's say we have a, a wing who's going to start here at the elbow, please. Second, not a perimeter player at the top, and we have an inside player somewhere here. So you let them stand, 
Defensive stance, please. Defensive stance. It's like you're playing defense, also down. Yeah. Now on the whistle, on the whistle, you just feel the lanes, okay? So you go side, side, basket to basket, post up. We can do it from the other side then, because here it's built, okay? Basket to basket, you see? That's the point here. We're going to do that from the other side. So you go straight and you pin at the semicircle. Yeah? Stay there for now. It's just for kids to really learn them how to spread out. And you can use it for warm up. So you just blow the whistle, they go, the next group goes, okay? At the half court, turn and try to see the ball. And out, and out, what you told them. And you put the contest so they understand. Now, done, next group, okay? This is how you start. It's really simple, but for the kids to start understanding, oh, okay. Now, you're gonna add to that, moving. So you sliding elbow to the sideline, elbow to the sideline, and let's say down from the interception up to the elbow. So it's a little bit of movement, so you put together, they know already a little bit about defense, so you put now up from defense, fast break, run the lanes, okay? So just slide, you can go slowly, slide, down, and you copy the line. Yes, up and down, because she will be out, so you're not gonna and run into her. I go to the center, or what you stay in the center lane then, so we're going, Okay, on the whistle, start moving, you're sliding. No, 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 sliding. Slide to the sideline. Okay, I'm sliding up here, slide back. You let them go for a few seconds. Blow the whistle, spread out to the wings. Middle lane, go across. Okay, show it. On the, down on the line and you're going up and down, sliding. Okay, let's go, slide. Okay, blow the whistle and they all go. At the half court turn, see the ball. Okay, even coaches don't have it as a habit. So what you teach them is really to get a habit at the half court, I want the ball. Okay, at the half court turn, try to see the ball. Okay, next, now, it is, I, I wanna show you how you can build up the things. Next, what you're gonna do, you put them, for example, on the free throw position. So we have a post player and you can have Two inside or two outside player in the group of three, right? Either or. So I showed now for the outside, they will be standing, free throw, on the free throw. I'm shooting the free throw situation. I'm shooting the free throw, you are standing here. No, no, no. One here. I'm shooting the free throw. Okay, no problem. You are out, out by the new rule, okay? And now you start from this. So I shoot the free throw, the player needs to get a ball, okay? On the ball side, we're asking for the ball, the other one is running. So you teach them out of the free throw situation how they should move, again. So you keep working on the lanes until they get it from different game-like situation. Standing, defense, free throw, okay? And you keep adding to them and they still have to go with the principles. Okay, you don't need to show it, it's just, I guess everybody understands, right? Everybody understands or we need to show it? Everybody understands or we need to show it? Okay. The same you can do with the post player. So now we focus on the outside players. Can you come down? Down, down. So now you're gonna do the same with the inside players because you know the kids are getting big. Okay, so you're the inside player. You're the outside player. Thank you. What's your name? Franci. Franci, please out. Ursha. Ursha. Oh. Natalia. Natalia. Nati. Ursha. Franci. Okay. So. Now you reverse it, we have, because with the kids it's very important to work in two, in three, maybe a little bit in four. Five on five, it's gonna come, okay? But first master them in this. So now on the free throw situation, whoever gets the rebound, so you can make the basket or you can just, okay? Whoever gets the rebound, this, you teach them the trailers. This is the second trailer. Now we have only one guard, so your position is to get to the ball, right? To get outlet, so Franz goes to the side. Pass, no two-handed passes, overhead or one head, and you can put it in. Once they know how to move a little bit, you go from the very beginning, mm -mm. ball back. One head and overhead, okay? And you take care of this. This is how you improve them. Now, because this player got a rebound, this is the runner, right? 
So as our post player is getting one of the post player, or in this case, is getting the rebound, you start running. You sprint at the half court, and only at the half court you turn to S for the ball. Okay. okay? While you're doing the outlet and you pass the ball, you finish. Done. Okay? okay? We're going to do that slowly. Ball here. Free throw situation. It can be anything. I'll show you then the next step. So, rebound, runner, runner, at the half court, S for the ball, finish. Okay? Finish. Then, what you add to it is. You're still running, fans keep the ball. Which lane you're running in? No. Which lane is she running in? We're still working only in three. And you want only the middle lane and side lane. You got a ball, you the trailer. Which lane you're running in? Trailer is the post player. In the middle lane. In the middle lane. So you teach them, the ball got there, we have the first runner who didn't get the ball, okay? You teach them how to receive the ball, so you make this pass actually, not now. Then we keep going, ball step down, and go to the ball side, okay? So you know on which side is the ball. But the second one is then also, you keep moving, keep moving. You keep adding there. And we have the second trailer coming. Now. I don't know if you're playing five out, so the classical position, or four out, one in, whatever you want to do, that's where she needs to come, okay? So you add, they got a length with a finish, just simple layup, or pass, pass layup. Then you add, the second trailer is coming, then you add, for example, you need to pass to the trailer, and you post up. In the age of 15, you start with a post up, so they learn how to post up, they learn how to spin, right? So if, I, if I'm here, for example, stay there. So I will post up, the ball is on the side, the ball goes to the middle, you can start with the post move, so you teach them, I want the ball, the reverse pass. You already have perfect, perfect combination, right? Still no screens, nothing. We're playing transition. But you're working on this and you're spending time on this in practice, and whatever you do, you put it in the drill, okay? So just running lanes, then if they understand a little bit that, put the technique there, so mm -mm, one-handed, overhead. Then you add there the options so they start to understand the technical, tactical preparation of the rebound. First, you look for the long pass. Second, outlet. Third, I dribble myself. And you put it into this exercise, so you give them options. Now we're working on outlet. Now we're working on blah, 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 and you keep going like that. Whatever you need. Then on this side, you put in whatever you need, okay? And then you start putting together exercises with coming of the defense, okay? I'll show you one more with a move. We can do it here, please. So this was two perimeter players, one inside in group of three, two inside, one perimeter. Now I'll show you for three perimeter players because in the beginning, you don't want to specify who is the guard who is the three position, who is the shooting guard position, okay? So what you do, just all of you please, you have in the gym still the circle, right? It can be in the pain, or here this circle, this circle. So you're gonna move in the circle like this, come here, you move in the circle, or they can slide in the circle, whichever way, or they can do it in the pain. And now, on the whistle, first again, you tell them, okay, stop, stop now. So we have this situation, on the whistle, First, who is closest to the basket, you are the runner. You can choose which way you want to run, but you have to go into the lane. Okay? Runner. Two others needs to go to the side for the outlet, because we don't know where the ball was rebounded. Outlet. So just to the sideline, that's for the ball. So they learn, ah, runner, outlet. And you have them in the lanes, right? So now if you receive the ball, then you add the ball. There, that's the, that's the guard, and I'm running in the lane. Simple. You can, be the post, you can be the first one who is giving the ball to them, but they learn how to fill the lanes without really specifying for them who is what. Okay? Show it. Okay, rebound. 
first one they need to look, you do the pass, okay? This might happen. Then you can stop. If this happens, you can put the which lane you're running in with the ball. Which lane we want the ball in. The ball is not on the side. We want the, we want the players now on the side because we're playing with the perimeter players, okay? So this is how you really make them understand what you want from them. Even for the coaches, you see they're messing up. It's very simple, but they keep messing up. You are in the side lane, the outside lane, both of you, perimeter, we are all perimeter players. Now, I don't know if you want to have a baseline cut or the first one has to go diagonally, but you keep teaching them whatever you want to have as a coach, okay? Next, what you do, they go three on zero, you put one defender in. You can, you can sit down, you can sit down. You put one defender in, so you split the court into areas. We're almost done. You split the court into the areas, like this. Okay? In most of the gyms you have the lanes anyways. And you're going to put one defender here. So instead of three on zero, it's three against one. One defender here. It's again, it's three against one in just the other lane. And one here. And they have to solve the situation. Three against one in each of the lane. Then you can put two defenders here, so it's three against two after all. Then you go three against zero and back two against one, or whichever way you want. But you keep spending a lot of time on transition and on reading the situation. Run the lane spread out. I want this pass. Why I want this pass? Because it's the pass possible. Okay? So you connect it all together. What are you teaching the guys? How much time do we have? That was a game I wanted to show you about. <laughs> You're teaching the guys to box out, for example, how you putting stuff together for the kids. Right? Okay. My philosophy, down on the block, don't care about the ball when he shots, find a player, get a contact, box out. It's down here. Now outside, you get a contact and you make sure the player is not going to get in the front of me. Why? Because I'm ready to run. Okay? I don't need to do the turn, but that's just whichever way you want. I just get this and I can go if you have the rebound. So what you do, you work, for example, on the rebounding drill, and then you put it together in, in this drill. So you go three on zero still, but you start with either you have in the cons there or you have a player there. There is the shot mate. They have to box out and go then. And for them, it's already something new, something harder. But that's how you start to... That's how you start with them to understand the game and what they are supposed to do. So you're not just practicing separately the stuff, but you start putting it all together and they will be able to do it in the game. Questions? The time is off, so... Thank you. Okay.